much for having me here today and welcoming me to your dome home. Uh, my name is Catherine uh, Parsons, and I'm one of the founders and CEOs of a technology education company called Decoded. And today I'm going to share with you a little bit of that journey, but also some insights and observations from across the world of government, education, and business, and why I believe the future is being written in lines of code. And I think you're probably all a part of it as well. So, the world is changing. We've heard about this so much in the last few years. Klaus Schwab is calling this the fourth industrial revolution. And he said, we've never faced a time of greater promise or greater peril. We stand in the balance. And the world of work is changing too. You may have read the research by the Oxford Martin Institute predicting that up to 47% of jobs could be easily replaced by machines in the next 10 years. Now, I really want to humanize those statistics a little bit. You know, we can kind of throw them away, can't we? These are human beings. You know, in the USA alone, we're talking about three million people in truck driving roles. Now, me Otto, the driverless truck startup. There's no one driving that truck. Very impressive. Now, I also looked and found out that there were also approximately about three million people called Dave in America. So how many Daves in the audience here? Any Daves? No Daves? No one's being automated today. That's good. And there are four million people in America in administrative roles. You meet Siri, meet Alexa. Alexa has 10,000 skills. Now there are four million Marys in America as well. Come on, is there a Mary in the audience? Raise your hand. Those poor Marys. I'd like to meet a Mary with 10,000 skills. And how about this? Did anyone read about the 19-year-old programmer who created the first chatbot lawyer? It overturned over 160,000 parking fines in America and the UK alone. You know, this is not a revolution that is just replacing the roles that you thought it was going to replace. It's a cognitive revolution. And I often hear two things. It's going to replace jobs that nobody wants to do. But that's quite an arrogant thing to say. Because what jobs are we replacing it with? And when there's high unemployment, there is high civic unrest. And also that idea that it's not going to replace me. Highly likely that you are within the 50%. And it's all being driven by this. The ones and zeros, the codes, the languages behind the screen sending instructions to machines. By the way, you always find kind of scary images when you put this in as well. You know, these kind of dark, like menacing images. Every single industry, every single sector, every single one of our behaviors is being impacted by this. But how many people can say that they feel confident about the technologies behind the screen? I mean, this is a highly technically literate audience. How many people will put their hand up to that question? You feel confident about the technologies behind the screen here? Hands? Would you like to come up on stage? No, I'm joking. <laughs> really kind of singling you out. That is a great show of hands. I've asked that question to tens, probably 10,000 people, I reckon, globally. And I think that less than 1% of the world can genuinely say yes to that question. For something that's impacting everything in our lives, that, for me, feels wrong. Do you know, more people are probably studying Latin and ancient Greek classics at university than coding. And I have a confession to make. I studied classics and Latin and ancient Greek at Cambridge University, guilty. But I did discover code, actually weirdly, in 2005, in this very venue. I came to a technology conference. I, I, my mind was blown when I arrived here. It was a real kind of, whoa, kind of vortex moment. And for me, it is just another language, but it is the language of billions. Because how can you imagine an idea in a void of knowledge? How can you then take that idea and communicate it to a technical person? if you don't have the vocabulary. And let's say you just wanted to create something. How could you actually create that idea without the re relevant tools and skills? Which is why, for me, I believe that technology education is the answer to the fourth industrial revolution. And it is the reason that back in 2011, we came up with this mission for Decoded. Technology education founded on certain principles, fast, really fast. Could you teach someone code in a day? We need to learn this now. Hands on, actually getting your hands dirty with this stuff. 
transformative, and most important, as the kind of you know the name says, we wanted to take away the jargon, take away the cliches, take away the fear, take away everything that was on that image I showed you earlier. So fast forward to today. Um, we are now in 85 different cities, uh, that's from the last month alone, and we just launched in Amsterdam, which we're super excited about. Uh, we are teaching leaders globally, so uh, hitting our target of 200,000 learners this year across a multitude of businesses. And we believe that there is no digital dark art that we cannot decode. So I want to draw out some universal insights and observations across the work that we've been doing globally. Number one, this is happening. So there have been lots of books written about it. It's all been very academic, but this is now happening. Businesses are looking at how they can automate and replace up to a third of their organization. Now, you know, robots are actually kind of easier to manage than human beings. They don't have sick days. They don't have family dramas. Um, you know, and Bill Gates was saying that, you know, we should be taxing the robots in the future. So how are businesses responding? So we're working with the likes of General Electric in the USA, and the CEO, Jeff Immelts, kind of went out there and said he wanted every new hire to learn to code. What was he, why? Why does he want people to do that? They are transforming. They're becoming a software and data-driven business, and he understands that new capabilities and skills are needed to do that. They're going to need engineers to create that platform. They're going to need product managers, programmers, creative thinkers, to actually build products and services on top of that platform. And at very baseline, they need digitally literate people in their sales teams and managers to be able to communicate that to all their clients. That is a radical shift in capability and skills. And I predict more companies will go on exactly the same journey. But you know, you can kind of foster that talent internally something that we do, but the problem is much bigger than that, because the problem lies in education. There simply isn't enough of this talent, so there is now a war for talent. This is Otto, the driverless truck startup from before, bought for a reported $700 million. There are something like 70 people working in that company. That is the value per head put on that talent. So there is a land grab for the companies in cyber, data, artificial intelligence as we seek to grab that talent. But really, we need to address it in education. And I'm super proud to be part of the UK's campaign to make coding a mandatory on the national curriculum in 2014 and to be chairing some uh, government funding for a new institute of coding. But really, that was 2014. Have things changed since that happened? If I'm honest, not enough. Why? Because we need an education revolution, not evolution. It's not about just putting something on a curriculum. We need to rip this up totally from scratch. You go and Google the word lecture or school or classroom from the 1910s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Honestly, every single decade, the image pretty much looks like this. Education has not undergone its own technological revolution, but I think it's on the cusp of it, and it's a very exciting time. So we're beginning to see some grassroots of people who are really like leading the game of technology revolution. For example, in Paris, a Call 42. Um, has anyone here heard of a Call 42? So, no teachers, apparently, no curriculum. It's been going for three years. Code is a fundamental part of it, no fees. Uh, the way that you get in is by solving problem-solving exercises. It's not based on, on your previous academic record. They're really doing things differently. 70,000 kids applied to this school last year. They could only take 1,000. And they're getting snapped up like that or they're starting their own companies. Or on the other side of the spectrum, recently the Canadian government just put 150 million pounds into an AI academy, the Vector Institute. Interestingly, also backed by over 30 businesses. Businesses collaborating with academia to solve this huge challenge. And they've set themselves a huge ambition. They want to create the largest number of PhD level data scientists in the world. But you know what? There just isn't enough of this stuff happening. But the promise really lies here, online learning. I mean, here we have a self-driving car engineer course. 
uh, a collaboration between Mercedes-Benz and Udacity, you can learn anything, anything online. What an incredible moment to be alive. But we know that human beings don't really work like that. We're a little bit more complex. So I'm going to ask you now, rip up your CV. Why would I ask you to do that? Don't live in the past. Forget what you've learned and start thinking about what are the skills that you want to learn right now. What do you want to be in the future as an individual or as a business? Define it. And even more than that, what do you want to be able to do? What are the skills and capabilities that you are going to need to survive and thrive in the fourth industrial revolution? Now, I can see two girls from my Engage group in the audience. We had a brilliant brainstorming session earlier. And I have to say, they did a far better job of me than actually devising what a future education curriculum could look like. What are the skills that we need to learn to survive in the fourth industrial revolution? And more importantly, how are we going to learn them? So here are the, some, some of the ones that I set myself, but Engage Group, I would like to uh, reassure you that I'm going to change this and add some of your incredible suggestions in. Um, for example, why say code? I want to learn coding. Coding is so abstract. Why present a subject that is not without the reason why you're doing it? It's much better in all the product development that we do. We always think about what is it that you want to be able to do. So if you would sit and write a list of the skills that you want to be able to do, here for me, I, was, I wanted to be unhackable. So I wanted to learn how to hack so that I could avoid that. I want to be artificially intelligent. I mean, I kind of feel like I'm already doing it with my phone and my hand, but I want to harness the power of AI to make everything I do better. On a very simple level, what I wanted to be able to do a few years ago when we started to code it, was I just wanted to be able to have a conversation with a technical person. And then I wanted to be able to prototype my own digital idea. So these are all very, very practical things that we need to be able to do. And I'd like you to add to that list, because future curriculums, I want them to begin to look like this. What problems are we solving? What capabilities do we need to build? And more importantly, how are we going to teach people? So this chart is from uh, Thomas Friedman's book on, uh, I think, thank you for being late. And it very simply shows, you know, technology is changing very, very quickly. But human beings, we hate change. And we generally don't change very, very quickly. Now, I'm obsessive about learning. I have, you know, studied multiple languages. It's been my big passion, the art of learning. And in fact, the, the most popular online course isn't machine learning, it's learning how to learn. The art of learning itself, how we hack our brains, is so fascinating. I often say that the most important two words in decoded, it's not the code bit, it's the D bit. It's how you simplify, it's how you decode, it's how you transmit complex knowledge very, very quickly. Now, Malcolm Gladwell quite famously said, you need 10,000 hours to master any subject. But you know what? When it comes to technology, you don't have 10,000 hours. Are you going to go back to school and university? There's not much out there. I actually believe that accelerated learning is possible. And this is going to be the most exciting breakthrough in education in the next five to 10 years. We spent two years developing a course that lasts one day so that we can transmit up to one year of learning. So if you left someone alone by themselves to learn that subject, they'd learn as much as we could teach them in one day. And I finally want to end on a message that, you know, this is for everyone. Most technology companies, most software is being coded and written in lines of code by the 0.001%. Tim Berners-Lee you know, said, this is for everyone. We need to make sure that we're solving diverse problems. And to do that, there needs to be diversity in technology. So if most technology products are being coded, funded, and founded, for example, by men, women are dropping out of technology in their droves. We have a challenge that we need to address. Now, over 50% of our learners have been female, 
and we've been able to track how successfully or unsuccessfully, you know, people are computationally thinking. There is no difference between a man and a woman's ability to computationally think. There is a vast difference in their confidence that they can achieve the task that they're being set when they begin it. So up to 30% less confident professional women that they will succeed at a coding challenge at the start. Yet, they all succeed to exactly the same level. So if it's an issue of confidence and perception and how technology is presenting itself, I actually think that's a great challenge, because that's a challenge that we can solve. It, it's an invisible barrier that we can break down. And I kind of want to say, I think we're living on this incredible moment of time. I think that the technology education revolution is going to be as transformative to us as human beings as the birth of the World Wide Web. Because those moments in history happen when huma human beings discover tools that allow them to transmit ideas and knowledge more powerfully. For me, technology is just a tool, but at the moment it's in the hands of a select few. Fundamentally, second, it can be taught to anyone. And third, the power, the power of even a basic level of skill set in the hands of a human being allows you to tap into the knowledge of, for example, AI, incredible, incredible amounts of human and machine learning put in the hands of human beings. So I believe that the future is being written in lines of code. And thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you.